Hello, everyone. Want to go over how to do homework nine, our last homework that's done, well, done outside of class. I think everything's done outside of class now. But remember, you have credit for in class uh, homework eight, 10, 11, I think even six. I think you got all, yeah, everybody got full 10 on that. So this is the last one you're going to do at home. Remember, you upload it on Canvas, or you can take a picture of it and send it to Argyle if you trust him with that. I wouldn't. And uh, so let's go over how to do it. All right, now. So the first question is, discuss what a meteor shower is and why they occur, as opposed to sporadic meteors. Well, sporadic meteors are the ones on any given night. You might see about 5 to 10 per hour. It's called the sporadic meteor rate. But why is there a meteor shower sometimes? What is the Earth let's say, doing in its orbit or intersecting in order for there to be a meteor shower. So that's just uh, one, one sentence can be is good for that. All right. Two, list the three types of meteorites and discuss some properties of each. So remember the three types of meteorites are slightly different than the types of asteroids. So just look back to that video of the PowerPoint and put the three types here and just talk about maybe a property or two or each of a property or two of each. That's good enough. Because on the on the next test there'll be uh, about three meteorite questions, probably about three or four. So it's good to know those. Go over those. Now most of this next test is going to be the moon. The moon. You, you got to know the moon. You got to know the phases of the moon. So here for three, this is good to practice. It says draw a diagram showing the Earth. Uh, and the sun, and label where the moon would be at each of the following phases. A new moon, three-day-old crescent, first quarter, 10-day-old gibbous, full, 18-day-old gibbous, third quarter, and a 27-day-old crescent. So what you want to do is this. You want to draw, start by drawing the Earth right here, which this thing can draw. I'm sure there's a way, but I don't know. Uh, so draw the Earth here. Show the rays from the sun coming from here. It doesn't even matter which direction the rays are coming from. You always, always going to be a new moon between uh, when the moon's between the sun and the earth. So we, the way we did in class is having the rays come from this way. But, you know, on a test, you never know. I might have the rays coming from this way. And still the moon's always going to go around counterclockwise. So don't let that fool you. It's just, you can always just turn the paper around if it confu uh, confuses you. So draw the earth. Maybe show the North Pole. Call it Earth. Draw rays from the sun coming here. Arrows right here. Point like the arrows pointing. I don't know if I can turn this cursor arrow. No, I can't. It's stuck pointing that way. Uh, so rays from the sun coming this way. And then show if this is the Earth and there are the rays, show where a new moon would be. So draw a circle that represents the moon. Actually, you know what I do? I'd shade it. I'd darken it on the side facing away from the sun. So every moon, you should darken it on the side facing away from the sun. Kind of like what we practiced in uh in the in the power that wasn't even powerpoint the lecture about the phase of the moon so we have a new moon and then show where a three day old crescent would be and label that and then all the way around showing those eight different i think eight uh should be eight there something like that so eight different phases of the possible many different phases right we just picked those eight all right so now for each of these what you're going to do is this so for it, you're going to draw what the moon would look like from the Earth's point of view, from being on the Earth's point of view, our point of view. If we have this picture over here with the Earth, that's not our point of view being on the Earth. You don't see the Earth that small. Being on the Earth, you look up and see the different phases of the moon because you're seeing different lit up parts of the moon. So what you do for this is you're going to say, let's say, okay, new moon, maybe label new, label three-day-old crescent, first quarter, 10-day-old gibbous, uh, full, um, I don't know, 18 day old gibbous, then the last quarter, then uh, 27 day old crescent. And then for the new moon, what you do is you shade it all. You shade it all. All right. So everything would be shaded. For a three day old crescent, you're going to have a little part lit up over here. So it's going to be lit up over here a little bit. The rest of it's going to be shaded. For a first quarter, you're going to have the terminator, day night line is straight. It's going to be dark over here, right? You're going to use your pencil or probably pencil, bed and pen, and have that lit up. So that's how you're going to do it. You're going to shade it how we saw that in the, saw in the PowerPoint. Now, for five, it says about what time, noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., midnight, 3 a.m., 
6 a.m., 9 a.m., approximately, would a, uh, would a full moon rise, new moon set. So what you have to do is just make a picture, kind of like what you have over, uh, over here, and then you have to see if you can answer these questions. And this is good to know. They're going to be, I mean, they're a lot of moon questions. I mean, they're going to be questions like maybe five questions about part question three on the test, like five questions on, on here like that. They're going to be maybe three or four questions like this, maybe even five, where you have to figure out if it's a certain phase of the moon, what time would it rise? What time would it set? What time would it be as high as it gets or on the meridian? So practice that. So and make sure, yeah, go over that. That's very important. And six, use these responses to answer the following questions. New, crescent, first quarter, give us full, third quarter. So if, let's answer the first one together. If the moon were first quarter today, what phase would it be tomorrow? Remember, it's only first quarter for like a minute. So the next day, it would be give us. So it would be give us. And for some of these questions, another thing to remember is that, remember the, the synodic month, the cycle of the phases is 29 days and 12 hours? That'll help you figure out. Like if it's a full moon today, what phase will it be in 32 days? If I said what phase would it be in 29 and a half days, it would be back to full. So wouldn't it be just like two and a half days past full? So that's a way to answer, figure that out by knowing that. And this last question here for this, if the moon were third or last quarter today, what phase will it be in 26 days? Well, you, knew, you know, sorry about that, you know, in about 29 and a half days, uh, it'll be back to third quarter. So isn't that just before third quarter? What phase would that be? All right. Now, seven. A car accident occurs in Santa Rosa around midnight on the night of a full moon. The driver at fault claims he was blinded momentarily by the moon rising on the eastern horizon. So moon rising, huh? Okay. Should the police believe him? Why or why not? So... I pulled this from some book somewhere. I thought it was an interesting question. See if you can answer that. Um, all right, now, eight. This is kind of interesting. I, I don't know how much I can ask you on the test of this. I'm, it's good to know the definition as far as when Easter Sunday is going to be uh, decided, when they decide Easter Sunday is going to be. So given the date that Easter Sunday is defined as the first Sunday following the first full moon after the vernal equinox, what is the earliest and latest date Easter Sunday can fall upon? Use March 20th as the vernal equinox date. So here's how to figure out the earliest date. Let's say March 20th were a Friday, all right? All right, so that's the vernal equinox. What we have to do is see when the next full moon is after that and when the next Sunday is after that. That'll give you the, the vernal equinox, that'll give you the Easter Sunday date. So if March 20th is a Friday, couldn't the next full moon, it doesn't count if the full moon's on that day. It, has, it means the full moon after that day. Couldn't there be one on Saturday the 21st? Right? Saturday the 21st could be a full moon. And then Easter Sunday is defined as the Sunday after the full moon, after the vernal equinox. So if Friday the 20th, Friday, March 20th, that's the vernal equinox, Saturday could be a full moon, which is the 21st, and the Sunday after that Saturday could be the next day. So the earliest date Easter can possibly be is March 22nd. Now, the harder part of this is to figure out what's the latest date. Let's kind of use that for an example, like the same kind of thing. Let's say March 20th were a Friday, all right? That's okay. But let's say the full moon were on that date. So what the problem is, you'd have to wait for another 29 and a half days for the next full moon, and then figure out what Sunday follows that. So see if you can figure out what the latest date is. All right, just get, yeah, get kind of, see how close you can get. The earliest date I gave you, March 22nd. Latest date, you figure it out. Now, nine, if the moon were crescent phase and you happen to be on the moon at this time, looking back at Earth, what would the Earth's phase be? Just to remember the simple rule for this, whatever the moon phase is, if you're on the moon, the Earth's phase is opposite. So whatever the opposite of a crescent is, what if, <laughs> if it's lit up with the part that's dark, so the opposite of a crescent, Kind of like the opposite of new is full, right? Opposite of first quarter is third quarter. What would be the opposite of crescent? So that's how to figure out what the Earth's phase would be. That's a good one. I think I put one of those on the test. Exam four. And 10, if we had a calendar based on the synodic month, and not, remember the synodic month, 29 and a half days. 
That's the solar month. And not months of 28, 30, and 31 days, what problem might we encounter? What could be a difficulty? That's kind of just open to interpretation. Just figure out something that might be a little weird. And that's, that's it uh, for the homework. And next week, is it next week? I think next week we're going to go over, yeah, next week we're going to go over the, the study guide. Because in two weeks is the exam. I'll remind you about that next, uh, uh, either this week, next week coming up, about the exam, exam four, which I think is on this, this is the first, first week of March. Um, so March, first week of May, and yeah, we're, we're in April. I don't even know what day it is. It's hard to keep track. It is like Groundhog Day. Really the same. All right. Well, that's it for now. Uh, again, this, this homework is due on Thursday by midnight. So get that in, upload it, or send it to Argyle. I would upload it myself, personally. And uh, that's it. So let me know if you have any questions. You can always email me. Take care.